Hello and welcome back to another episode of MC Airsoft. My name is Mark and today we're going to be painting our rifle that we've been working on. Uh, in my case it's an SSG-10 but this is continuing the uh, prepping a sniper rifle series. Uh, so we went over how to attach a scope, some um, work we did on the inside, things like that. Uh, so I got two things tied up here to paint. First is going to be the rifle itself. And second is the magazine carrier. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, it attaches right in front of the trigger guard here and holds an extra magazine for it. Uh, if it continues the theme I'm going with of a grab and go kind of rifle, um, so I got tools in the back here that will allow me to <clears throat> disassemble the rifle as far as I'm going to in the field. Uh, so yeah, um, in previous episodes we went over internal modifications, we went over mounting scope, all those things. So today we're going to paint it. Um, so <clears throat> a quick note of painting. If you saw the previous episode on building this cheek pad here, I did go ahead and after that video, uh, cover it in JB Weld so it shouldn't absorb too much paint and also it's um, more rigid. Uh, it's uh, essentially making a thin layer of fiberglass over the top. Um, so we did that uh, and then before this video, I went ahead and did my taping and so what I did for that obviously nothing needed to be taped on the buttstock you can tape the rubber uh, the, the paint is just going to flake off it's not a big deal to me but if you want the butt, pack to butt pad to remain black you can either take it off I didn't because I have things in here uh, but you could take it off and not paint it and then it will remain black or you know whatever color you want it to be. Um, so moving down the rifle, uh, I didn't tape the trigger because I want to paint the trigger. I did not tape the bolt uh, because I didn't need to and also I want it to get painted. I did not tape over the bolt cylinder here. Um, I'm, I want it to be camouflaged and uh, if the, this scratches off I'm gonna go in and uh, hopefully chemically blacken it anyway I'm hoping that it's aluminum so I can do that if it's not aluminum uh, it's definitely not steel steel would rust and uh, so it might be stainless steel in which case it won't be able to chemically blacken but and I'll just have to figure something else for it uh, but I did want that to be painted if possible uh, for the scope, I went ahead and covered the two scope rings. If you saw my previous video talking about painting, how I did that, or the scope lenses, how I do that is I just place tape over it and then press it onto the lens so it sticks better. Uh, but that way you can get right up to the rim. You don't have to cut it or anything. Not a big deal. I went ahead and did that for the lens cover on the front as well. I wanted to paint the rubber there, so I'm leaving that. Uh, I taped off the indication for what power the scope is, which is important if you ever plan on replacing it. You want to know that you're getting a better scope, not just better quality glass, but better suited to the role you want it to be. So in this case, it is a 3x9. Uh, it's a fairly cheap one, so maybe in the future, I'll need to check that so I know I'm going up to a you know, 4 by 12 or something like that if I want to do that in the future. It just you know, saves the hassle of looking it up. Um, it's right there. And also uh, I taped off the dial for um, the magnification. So when you're turning it, you can tell what magnification you're on. That's going to be handy for later on. We're going to be building a... Uh, a dope card, so data on previous engagement card. Uh, what that is essentially is that it's going to tell me any information I need to have in order to cite it in. 
so it, in my case, if you imagine a Excel spreadsheet, it might say, you know, um, spring at the top. So like M160, M170, M180, because I have uh, all three springs. Actually, I believe this came with an M150, but that's a different subject. Um, so it's going to have all three things on it. And then, uh, then it's going to say something like 100 yards, my hold. And then it's going to say, you know, or sorry, not 100 yards, 100 feet, hold, 150 feet, hold, 100, um, you know, 75 feet, hold, 100, 200 feet, and on out to like 300. Um, and then maybe it's going to have measurements on, um, on uh, different weights of BBs, things like that. We'll see how complicated I want to get with it. But uh, that's the idea. Um, but having magnification will help with range estimates, being that I know I'm on three power. And then my reference, I can tell that at three power, a, you know, five foot, 10 to six foot individual should be this many uh, mills in the scope and I can range estimate. So taping off that might not be incredibly useful for if you're not worried about building a data card or something like that, but to me, it, it fit what I wanted to do. Uh, on the other side, I taped off the serial number, and that's mostly for uh, warranty purposes or so I can have that written down uh, if I go to an event and if I lose track of this rifle, well, one, I have videos to show that, yes, this is my rifle, and two, um, I'll be, if I can write down the serial number and say, hey, that is my rifle, this is the serial number. Um, and also, I'm not sure how the warranty program works with Novridge, so I went ahead and taped over that. So if I do have to warranty this and they're like, hey, what's the serial number? Oh, it's right there. Uh, nice and simple. Um, Okay, so I had to pause it right there. I forgot to tape off the hop-up indicators. Now, eventually, this will probably get a TDC, so that won't matter. And on the next paint job, well, I'll paint over that. But for right now, that's important. So I went over, I went ahead and taped over the dial indicator. And at the end, all I have in the muzzle is a rolled up piece of paper towel should do just fine. And then uh, the magazine, what I did for that is I went ahead and taped over the magazine's back plate or bottom plate or however you want to call that. And I uh, then made sure it was trimmed up and then just put that in there so you're not spraying down into the gun itself. <laughs> Other than that, you know, basic, uh, quick and simple. How we're going to do this is I'm going to um, lay out my uh, pattern. Um, essentially, I'm going to be pausing and unpausing the video quite a bit. Uh, so you don't have to watch a 45 minute video, but you'll get the idea. One thing of note is I am in a well ventilated area. My garage is fairly large. I've got the door open, so I'm in a fairly well ventilated area. Uh, you want to shake the can, uh, every can, uh, nice and well so you don't get globs of paint coming out. Uh, follow the instructions on the can. Obviously, I'm using camouflage colors by Rust-Oleum. I use them for pretty much everything unless I need a specific color. They're, it's a it's great paint. Uh, it goes on easy it's, um, and it's flat, which is important for doing uh, camouflage. You don't want refl super reflective things. Um, so, and then you want to err on the side of caution, I would say that, um, whatever it says in this case, it says, um, hold the can upright 10 to 12 inches away. I would err on the side of caution, say 12 inches, you know, uh, you want to get closer 
if it is super hot out, you want to get further away if it's super humid. Uh, but um, that affects how it dries in the air. But you get the idea with that. Um, also, uh, I did track down Swamp Sniper was the video I saw that hung the, the rifle up. So uh, good on him for sharing that good information. I've been hanging up my rifles to paint them ever since. It just makes more sense that way. Um, so, and all I have is I have a piece of wire going to a piece of paracord through this plate on this one on the magazine. I have a piece of twine going through the screw hole and then a pen on the other side acting as a stopper. So, nothing too complicated. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So, making sure I'm going to paint a little bit of the buttstock, um, making sure to hold it far uh far enough away you know guesstimating 12 inches or so you want to start off of the rifle end of the rifle or whatever part you're painting right so you want to start just to the left and just to the right and back and forth right the reason that you don't start on the rifle itself i'm getting a little close with it but whatever the reason you don't want to start on the rifle itself is it'll glob up, right? You'll get a burst going right there and then it starts moving so you'll get more paint in one area which will cause runs and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and we'll come back when the rifle's brown. Alright, so uh, rifle's brown now, great. Uh, that's going to serve as our base layer. The reason that we went with brown as our base layer is the first thing we're going to do is set up twigs or branches uh, so another paint pattern you can do is uh, something like this on this helmet right um, without twigs without branches there are a little bit of the brown ones but you get the idea uh, this kind of paint job will work on any piece of equipment you want it um, you uh, want to paint but uh, today we're just going over this rifle obviously and this magazine reason that the magazine is separate from the rifle is i wanted to have a different paint job so it looks like a magazine because normally when you're painting a gun you you have you know six or seven or whatever magazines um and you're not going to be able to have every paint or every uh, magazine perfectly matched the rifle, uh, so we want. I wanted to vary the uh, magazine just a bit to make it look at like a separate piece, like a detachable piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, natural fiber rope. You want natural fiber uh, because it doesn't give you as crisp of lines, which is a good thing for camouflage. If you're going for uh, like a more Call of Duty kind of look, then, you know, maybe you want the crisper lines. Uh, that's up to you. Um, a more video game aesthetic, you're going to want uh, like paracord, something like that. Um, okay, so there's one. We'll do a second one. Now, I have these smaller pieces because that's what I was using on the helmet because uh, this did have a uh, branch texture before, so I was just putting it in the holes, laying it over, just to make life easier. I cut some pieces off for that. Um, so I have these cutoffs. I'm just using these to do the magazines or the magazine singular. I might use this on magazines like AR magazines in the future. I don't know yet, we'll see. But that's the idea. And then you take a longer piece and again this is this is how i paint my equipment um because it's simple and it works for me i don't have to spend too much time going crazy on it um so yeah um you can do whatever color scheme you want whatever fits the area you're going to play in uh, one thing you might think also is what team you're going to be on like if you're going to a mill sim, you might, and you're going to be on green team, you might want to lean a little heavier into green, even if you live in like Arizona, like I do. So 
Um, so next we're going to take the right, or uh, we're going to take this cording, we're going to go through our paracord just to hold it in place, tie a simple little knot, um, nice and easy, right? Let me move these apart from each other. They're hung from my rafters, so I can slide them around as needed. And all we're going to do, um, if you've seen my other video, is we're just going to wrap it down. Uh, my other video paint job. We're going to wrap it down, and then we'll wrap it back up after that. Uh, the reason being is because what we're trying to do is break up the texture of the uh, rifle, uh, the silhouette of the rifle. Um, we're trying not to have it look like a gun, normal, number one. Number two, we're trying not to have it show a uh, horizontal silhouette, right? Because that's what we're really trying to fight against. If you look at most camouflages, like your BDUs, um, your multi-cam, whatever, the, the blotches are, generally speaking, if you're standing straight up, going to be running uh, horizontally uh, because the human eye is generally looking for something going vertically, okay? The, a human body going straight up and down is a vertical, or creates vertical lines. Right, so there you're probably going to be looking for something going vertically if you're looking for a person. And uh, the reason that the, the reason it run the camouflage runs horizontally is to break that up, right? So, uh, being that rifles you're generally looking for something uh, horizontal, you want to put vertical stripes on it. Now, what if you're not holding it horizontal? I'm trying to stop this from spinning too fast. Okay. Um, so, an example being my other painted rifle, right? Uh, this is my Mark 12. There's videos on it, but the stripes are running vertical compared to a horizontal gun. If you're not holding it, <clears throat> if you're not holding it uh, horizontal, then they're running they are then running horizontal, right? So it's just counter to whatever way the rifle is placed normally. Okay. <clears throat> so the next color to go on is going to be, in my case, a uh, sand camo, oh, camo sand. Um, reason being is what this is going to do is this is going to give me my fat branches. Um, and then I'll put the camo sand on it, and, or live branches, you can say as well. And then I'll put a smaller cording on it, which will give me, uh, on later uh, parts of the paint job, it'll give me small branches. So, all right, so um, we went over with the camo sand color. <clears throat> and as you can see, especially in here, okay, I didn't go heavy on it. I did uh, kind of more of a misting, right? A little bit further away, a little bit more gap in between um, stripes of paint. Reason being is because that way, um, that way we're not uh, oversaturating it and it's going to give it more of a dirty kind of texture later. Uh, if you do go heavy on it, um, it might look too clean. The lines might look too uh, clean. And one of the problems with that is it's not going to look as natural. So depending on what you're going for, that might not be a good thing. Um, so I left some space. You can also come back in with like a brown or something and dirty it back up. Uh, which I might do at the end as well anyway, uh, even though I already started with more of a dirty look, might do that anyway. So then we're going to take our <clears throat> um, smaller cordage, right? We're going to untangle it, 
make our lives a little easier. Okay, and then we're going to spin the rifle again. Um, now, you can really vary up the pattern uh, with this, okay? So, uh, this is, again, gonna give us nice small branches, uh, twigs or whatever you wanna call it. <clears throat> There we go. So, need to work on my cordage management, but whatever. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you can do however many little branches as you want. Uh, you can also do them maybe running in other directions to give it more a little more natural of a feel. Uh, but I would recommend if you're starting off just going with the basic vertical patterns uh, makes life a little bit easier um, and you're less prone to patterning uh, because the human brain is really good at creating patterns even if it's not, not there. Uh, if you, it's an unintentional maybe, really good at creating patterns. So... We want to avoid that by kind of being sloppy with it, okay? Get it down there on the end of the muzzle. Now, what I'm probably going to do with this is, uh, because I'm a nerd, I'm going to come back in at the end and um, give it a blast of black on the muzzle end to simulate a uh, carbon scoring kind of thing. Not really necessary, um, so, but, uh, you know, why not, right? Um, like, I am, uh, if you've been into my videos at all, definitely a little more on the Milsim side of things. Uh, so, to me, that little bit of extra realism in the look, uh, it breaks it up a little bit more, makes it a little less, uh, painted looking, fake looking, whatever you want to call it, um, just adds to the uh, replica idea, you know? So, and again, we're being kind of sloppy with this, but that's going to help our pattern building, okay? And I don't know where the rest of this small twine is, so I'm going to leave it like so, and then... I'm going to paint this with a uh, first layer of dark green. This is going to be a forest camo. And what I'm going to look for in this is to give it um, more of a, uh, a blotchy kind of look. Imagine if you're looking at a uh, forest or something. Uh, you can see on like the helmet this kind of blotch of green. Um, where maybe it's far away bushes or bushes that are uh, a little more dense, something like that. It's, it's going to give it a little more shadow, you know. It's, it's going to be, it's going to add some visual interest. And yes, my helmet just fell. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, but, so, yeah. Alright, and uh, as a final bit... Notice I uh, did not do the same treatment to the magazine. I only have one of these small cords and so I'm just going to hold off on that until I can take off the, the cording from the rifle. But, so we're going to take our camo netting or um, camo spray netting material, laundry bag. It is a laundry bag. Um, and with years and years of spray paint on it. So, and what we're going to do on this is we're going to look at, okay, there's some green there. I'm going to give it a burst of light green. Okay, there's some green there. Burst of light green. Kind of break up the dark green nice and quick. Don't put too much thought into it. Um, if you don't want to get paint on your hands, uh, I am a painter by trade, so I do not mind paint on my hands, but if you do not want to get paint on your hands, then I suggest wearing a plastic glove or rubber glove or something, 
Um, is it healthy? No. Should I be probably wearing a glove? Probably, but I'm not going to. Okay. Um, so some of these areas are going to turn out a little bit better than others. Another way you can do it, um, if you want to get the pattern a little bit um, better, spider. Okay. If you want to get the pattern a little tighter, you can put the you can take a lump of it, put that over, and do tighter areas like that. Okay. Um, it's going to give you a little bit better pattern transfer. And uh, also remember, you don't want to necessarily do just put the rifle in here uh, and give it a one uh, uniform kind of snake skin. I mean, if you're going for that video game look, sure. Um, or if you know what you're doing and can break up the pattern, sure. Uh, but um, the snake skin thing, it stands out pretty good against a lot of backgrounds. Uh, so it might not be the best, might not be what you want to go for. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're just going in over the dark greens, um, and adding in paint where we see fit, just kind of breaking up that dark green kind of look, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, don't overthink it too much. Uh, and you can always add more. It's harder to add less. So, uh, keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. So spinning rifles, but, uh, I just stripped all the uh, painting um, stencils, if you will, off. This is kind of the look you get, okay? Um, I'm doing this all like about five minutes in between each of these cuts. Uh, so you get the idea and it's it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, doesn't take a lot of effort either. A lot of brain power. You don't need to overthink it. Um, it, this paint rubbing alcohol will take care of it, but also this, uh, this rifle has been painted four times, I think now, um, without being stripped. As long as you do the nice light coats, it'll be fine. Uh, you'll never really gum it up too badly. Uh, you don't need to worry about it too bad. Um... Just keep it simple and keep it easy, right? So we're going to um, gonna cut again one last time. I'm going to throw the magazine on, take the tape off, and then we'll take it out and see, see what it looks like. All right, so final part of the video. I just wanted to show it outside. Okay. Um, now this bush probably isn't the best. We're heading into spring, so stuff's starting to uh, bloom. But you can see you got some dark greens, light greens. I uh, got some light greens on the tree. This is a velvet mesquite, so you know once it uh, once it starts getting more leaves, it'll blend in a little bit better with the lighter greens. I went a little heavy on the green because next month I'll be going to, or next month from when this is filmed. I'll be going to a uh, Lion Claws event and playing on the green team. So I wanted it a little bit more green uh, just for that. But um, if we look around, um, show you the kind of area I'm in. Okay. If we go ahead and look around, lots of green out here. Uh, I play, normally I play right down the road, so it's not too far. About the same kind of environment which is good um but yeah so that's that's kind of the idea is that you should in whatever environment you're heading into 
you should be able to leave it and maybe lose it <laughs> right so uh leave it up against a bush and maybe lose it so but that's the idea it's um quick and dirty camouflage it just needs to break up the look of a rifle and honestly it makes it a little look a little cooler in my opinion but that's uh that's the idea uh so until next time stay safe and stay hydrated